You have a prepaid call. You will not be charged for this call. This call is from Jix. An inmate at a federal prison. This call is being recorded and is subject to monitoring. Hang up to decline the call or to accept. Dial 5 now. If you wish to block any future calls of this nature, dial 7. Niggas down for nice things, things. Raptors trying to make it in the game. Niggas getting snatched off the corner. Fast tap the phones in the on us. Mm -mm -mm. I'm trying to make it out the hood. But niggas keep fronting, acting like it's all good. Hope that I can make another year. To all the fallen soldiers, just know that every night you hear my prayers. I call home and her chicks got killed. Shot in his V, sitting in my cell. Thinking like, damn, it could have been me. Maybe Joe was just a blessing in disguise as a gift. Is every rapper trying to make it out the hood getting killed? When I heard the nigga stack got killed, it hit home because three weeks prior to that son just hit my phone told me shoot the far rock away to be in this video now i think about him when i walk in the studio little snoop signed to me had a promising career guess it's true that your dreams could turn into nightmares tupac fade passenger side biggie smalls and maserati fox they killed him when he came home rod diggs blue trail is just like he died because on top of his life said they gave him 105 hurt my heart they killed pop had to smoke one in my cell rather die in the streets in the pool of blood to be back in jail Mm -mm. Damn, yo. yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's real shit, man. That shit touched me because it's crazy shit. Last night I was up on YouTube, and this this, this channel called Crown TV Courts. They was covering Rod Diggs' case, and they was um doing it. They had like the the court reporter. She read the transcripts, and they was um doing some shit about his case last night. So definitely shout out to Rod Diggs. Rest in peace, stack bundles. Chinks, drugs, motherfucking little Snoop and everybody. But speaking on rappers that get killed. For y'all just tuning in, we live on YouTube. We got Jinx the Juvie on the call live right now. He just spit some exclusive bars. We got Jinx on live for everybody tuning in. Um, Coming up from Brownsville, all this pop smoke, bringing a drill sound to New York and blowing up with it. And young boy got killed before his time. How do you, what's your reaction to that? Um, man, I definitely relate. You know, I mean, first and foremost, my condolences to his family and everybody that's in his team. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I think it was a hard blow for Brooklyn for for music coming out of New York as a whole. That that woo sound, that that drill sound, was, was something different for for the city of New York, and, and it, it was devastating. You know what I'm saying? I definitely went back to my cell and reflected. You know, I've been shot six times on four different occasions. So it made me think of how blessed I am just to, to be alive, even in my situation with having 25 years, because I could have been pop smoke, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of artists that's in the game right now who barely escaped the streets and, and, and bullets and, and could have been pop smoke. So I think for all the rappers that's out there that was living the street life and, and, and caught up in the game before transferring over into artists in the music industry, I think it touched everybody as a whole. And, and you can feel it out there in the industry, anybody that's, you know, uh, reflecting on his short career and what he was bringing to the table and how he got cut off so so early. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's definitely a tragedy, man. Dude got hot ass music that he would never get to see, get the love and get. Well, speaking on Rod Diggs and Stack Bundles, how's your relationship with them two dudes? Rod Diggs is like my bro, man. You know, at the end of the day, I grew up with Rod. I know Rod personally, man. Rod's a smart individual, man, and. It's a shame that, you know, his, his his lifestyle caught up with him, just like me, you know what I'm saying? So, but I understand how, how, how this thing goes, man. It's only two places you go early when you're in the streets, and that's jail or, or the graveyard. And I think Ron understood that from, from you know, being out in the streets and seeing other people before him go through it. So I think he's a strong individual, and, and I know I pray, and God willing, he can bounce back from them elbows and get back out there, man. I know once I get back out there and get back to it, I'm definitely going to reach out to him and see if we can put something together as far as, you know, creating a, a movie or a TV series about his life. You know what I'm saying? Because it definitely needs to be shared with the world as well as mine. Did you get to do any music with Rod Diggs before he um was locked up? Yeah, yeah. Me and Rod. Me and Rod recorded a joint. Uh, he had it up on YouTube. Me and Rod did a joint when he first came home. Me and Rod spent a lot of time together. Believe it or not, when I went back to college, 
you know what I'm saying? I let him know. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm entering, enrolling in, in, in college. He actually enrolled too, right behind me. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. We both was going to college at the same time. You know, so I know personally, Rod's a, a smart individual. He's not this monster that, you know, the district attorney tried to make him out to be. Definitely, definitely. See, that's knowledge that a lot of people don't know because the what thing I was reading, watched last night, they mentioned nothing about him going to college. Um, right. Uncle Murder took the stand on his behalf. Uncle Murder took the stand on his behalf. You know what I'm saying? Hold it, held it down for him. So everybody saw Uncle Murder for being a stand-up G, dodged some questions. They're trying to trap him off. And Uncle Murder held it down right. on the stand. I mean, so Uncle Murder. So let's speak. I don't, I don't want to downplay my relationship with Stack, too, man. It was it hurt me that, that, that Stack got killed. I, went to, I actually went to Stack Bundle's funeral, man. I was just with him, like like I said, in the rap. As soon as I got on the joint, man, I was out there far Rockaway with him shooting a video like three weeks before he got murdered, man. Like So that was really like hurtful, man, to, to, to see that happen to him. I was just out there far Rockaway with him. And anybody who knows who chased the jewelry, man, no matter what, if I'm signed or running around with Russell or on BT Rap City in the booth or Run house, I always was in the hood. I always was in the streets. And when I went out to Far Rockaway and I seen Stack Bundles, you know, congregating in his hood, it reminded me of me. So like I said, it's called from a federal prison. These different individuals who life was took in, like I said, made me, you know, reflect on my own situation. So rest in peace, Stack Bundles, and shout out the whole Far Rockaway too, man. Yeah, Stack Bundles was a great artist. Getting the game as young as he was, getting around Jim Jones, all the industry people he was around. And then for him to have his protege, you know what I mean, his partner, rather, Chinks Drugs blow up and then get killed too, that shit, that's right. just, it's just, it's just sad, man. So speaking on artists getting shot, how deep were you in your career when you first got shot? I was 16 when I first got shot. I was signed at Dev Jam already when, once I got shot. You know, so I was already on when I, when I, when I first got shot, man. I didn't get, I ain't start getting shot or being in the streets until I was on, you know what I'm saying? For mm. real, for real. No, yo, I got a question for you about the shooting, but, but to tap into that, that's some deep shit because I always say that. I saw I saw an interview Tupac said that. I saw an interview Chris Brown said that. I saw an interview Beanie Siegel said that. Like, they said, yo, I didn't get into all this trouble in the streets until, like, this until I got in the game. So that's definitely a serious issue that we have to figure out. Why does that go that way? You get what I'm saying? Or why do you, you think that go that way? You gotta understand once you once you coming from where we come from, which is the bottom, the slums, the ghetto, and not having nothing to be signed to any type of label and get any type of recognition and, and get money, come across money and funds and fame. We don't know how to handle that responsibility. We wasn't taught how to handle responsibility, money, wealth, and fame. So yeah. we get sidetracked and get pulled in different ways. Then you have jealousy, you have people in your ear, you have situations that occur, and you attack them as if you're invincible because you got some money, you got a record label behind mm. you, or you try to live out these, these lyrics that you put down inside the booth so that people can take you serious. And sometimes you get caught up in those things, and that's why I think certain things happen the way they do. Mm, that's definitely real. You're explaining, that's definitely real. You can't explain no better than that. I'm from the